Welcome to the Fermented Homestead. If you're new here, my name is Anna, and on this channel, I'm sharing our journey of learning how to turn our home into a homestead. Today, I'm doing something a little bit unusual for my channel, and I thought that I would go ahead and do a, a gift guide sort of thing for anybody who is an aspiring or current traditional cook. I guess you would say. Anybody who is trying to, to learn how to cook more in the kitchen, anybody who's trying to learn how to cook more from scratch, and some people might just be a little bit overwhelmed with all the options out there, and I thought that I would go ahead and just kind of compile a list of a bunch of different things that you could buy if you wanted to, and things that, that will definitely help you will we'll help things go smoother, help them go faster, and help them be less frustrating. I wanna make sure that I'm saying there's very few things on this list that you actually have to have. And there's definitely varying qualities of all these sorts of things that you can purchase. The things that I decided to go with, um, they are, more like kind of proven brands. I don't want to steer anybody wrong and encourage anybody to buy, you know, like some crappy stuff that's just going to break in a, in a you know, couple weeks worth of use. So I did end up going with some of the more name brand like uh, Cuisinart and KitchenAid, stuff like that, because I know that those are great brands. The brands, everything that I've purchased of those brands have been fantastic. So those are the ones that are actually going to be linked. So this buying guide, I'm currently making it just before Mother's Day, but this, definitely applies to any holiday whatsoever. So it's 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 coming in time for that holiday, but like I said, it can be birthdays, it can be Mother's Days, it can be anniversaries, it can be Christmas, you know, any different holiday where you need to purchase something for somebody in your life who really enjoys nourishing cooking and somebody who wants to build up their kitchen. I, for one, definitely am not somebody who really appreciates jewelry. I have my wedding ring and I have my engagement ring. And I'm pretty sure that's the only the only jewelry that my husband has ever purchased for me. I really like to get gadgets and cooking equipment and things like that, things from my house, things from my garden. That is what I like to get for any kind of any of the the few holidays that we do actually celebrate. I also have kind of spread this out into a lot of different price points, and uh, some of these things are things that I already have and I use regularly and I love them, and so I have linked them. Some of the things are things that are on my wish list and things that I really hope that I am able to uh, to get someday. So I spread them out, I have an under $15, under 50, under 100, under 250, and for the big spenders, anything over that. It's for any kind of a price point, whatever you are wanting to spend, I'm sure that there are definitely plenty of things on this list. There's only gonna be a couple of links actually down below. I'm not gonna link every single teeny tiny little thing that I'm mentioning in this video. I'm actually linking to my Amazon store, and you can actually click on that one link, take it to the Amazon store, and that will take you to all the pictures and all everything, I have it all categorized for you guys just to make things a little bit easier. So that's also another reason for me wanting to make this video is I just actually figured out how to do the shop thing on Amazon so I was like I kind of compiled all of these lists and I was like how can I how can I make this a good functional video for you guys that you guys can follow along with and I figured that would be the best way to do it so the first thing that is actually on my list is not an Amazon thing it is actually canning jar lids and those are four jars of canning lids and this is not a canning lid video but those things are amazing they are so versatile you can use them for everything if you have the actual mason jars you can you can use them on anything for everything I mean you can use them in the half gallons, you can use them in the pints and the quarts and the jelly jars. You can use them on, uh, you know, regular mouth, wide mouth, whatever size you have, you can use those. All you need to do is have the jar and you have this lid that is fantastic. It's BPA free. It's made with, made with uh, stainless steel in there. It's a nice thick lid. It's not going to buckle easily. Like if you're using your ferments or anything in there, these lids are fantastic. That one is going to be its own separate link, and that one is going to be down below. It's the four jars of canning lids uh, link that I have down there. That'll be the first link in the description. Everything else, for the most part, if I can find it on Amazon, it will be in my Amazon shop. I should also mention here, unfortunately, I don't have the actual props that I can show you of these things because most of my things are in storage. We're in, staying in an Airbnb right now, and I have very few of these items actually on hand and it's really frustrating me because I'm like, where are all my things? I have to improvise and do all kinds of weird stuff. And it's like, like I said, it can be done without most of, without a lot of the things on this list, but it's really frustrating. Some, some of the things are really frustrating to try and do without. 
and you will make your transition into whole foods cooking and into having a more natural living with the land sort of experience if you have some of these equipment it, some of this equipment on hand to just make the job go a lot smoother like you'll be much more likely to succeed and and to persevere with this sort of thing if you have some of these things on hand right, so we're going to go with the under 15 and i really like uh there's a set uh, i'll put the in many pictures that i can find i'll put them up here i like the plastic lids that actually fit on top of the mason jars those things are great if you don't want to cut off the oxygen to them if you want to make sure they don't rust say if you are done with the fermenting process and you want to cap it off and put it in the fridge those plastic lids are great for it. Make sure you're getting a BPA one, BPA free one. And they also make them that have a silicone ring on the inside that actually make it so that it can seal even tighter. So I'll make sure to link both of those down below. And then uh, kitchen utensils, stainless steel and wood, definitely reign supreme. I will link a, uh, several of them down below. Wooden spoons are fantastic. They just take a little bit more work. You have to, every month or two, depending on how often you use them, you have to kind of grease them up with some like coconut oil or something like that and then wipe them off and they work great. Don't let anybody tell you that wooden stuff is, is you know, uh, harbors disease or any of that kind of stuff. The actual, the real scientific, that studies show that the plastic is actually the one that harbors all bacteria. The wood ones are actually safe because they have naturally occurring bacteria that actually fight against the bad bacteria and make it a safe place. It's kind of like with your skin. If you use antibacterial hand soap, you're gonna wash off all the good bacteria and then you're just not gonna have the good bacteria to fight the bad, you know? So it's a similar principle. Uh, another thing that I really like having is a sprouting kit. If you're really starting to get in, into natural cooking, sprouting things or, or leaving it, to, you don't even have to necessarily sprout it, but you're soaking it. If you're soaking your beans, if you have these little, it's a little uh, plastic lid that fits on top of your mason jar and you can just, you can fill it up with water and dump it out and fill it up or dump it out, but you're keeping the contents of the jar inside. It just makes things go a little bit smoother. Uh, mixing bowls are specifically stainless steel or glass mixing bowls are fantastic to have. You really want to avoid plastic if you're going towards a more natural kitchen. Another thing in the along the lines of the stainless steel is stainless steel measuring cups and measuring spoons. Uh, rolling pins are another great low cost option. If you guys are just looking for something, um, something that is going to be easy on the budget, but something that is still going to be meaningful, something that's still going to be useful to somebody that you love or to yourself. These under $15 items are great. And there's, I'm gonna ha I have a couple of different measuring, or not measuring, a couple of different rolling pins that I also have linked. And one of them is just, is a very standard, it's a very normal, it's the common one you find in your grandma's kitchen and it is fantastic. And another one is one more for more preciseness and it has these, um, these like rubber pieces on the ends where you can actually control. So if you'll have an even, dough when you're rolling out like a pie dough or a cookie dough or something like that it has these little guides on the end and you can you can adjust the height of the rolling pin those things are great to have so now we're going to go to the under 50 and some of these ones you can find them for under 50 and there's ones that you can find for over 50. so it's not an exact science i'm just kind of trying to get get it in a, in a good category of some things uh the first thing would be a crock pot like a slow cooker you don't have to get the crock pot brand that's just what i've always gotten and i've always purchased mine at costco feel free to buy yours at costco i think it's a great deal and they have a good warranty on it i love buying you know any kind of kitchen gadgets at costco they're great to get there but if you don't have an access to costco or you just don't want to uh, it's i have a i found one that is pretty similar i tried to find the one that was as similar as possible to the one that i got at costco it's great, it has a nice glass lid, it has a little digital um, digital display, and it has latching lid, so you can actually take it with you, and it actually makes it so that it kind of, it cooks a little bit better, like it, it'll it hold the heat in a bit more. So, uh, let's see. Next one is a wand mixer. There's actually two that I own. One is an Ace Cool brand, and that one came with a kit. It has like a whisk on it, it has a uh, milk frother, food processor, it comes with like a cup that you can mix stuff up in. I like that one a lot, it has like 12, 12 speeds to it. Um, I'll link that one. And then I also have the KitchenAid brand one, which is also really great. The only downside is, well, not the only downside, but that one doesn't come with a kit. It is a more known brand, 
but it doesn't come with like the kit. It just has the cup that goes with it. It only has two speed, high and low. Uh, but that one works great. It's gotten me through a long time. Another thing in the under 50, I don't even know, a lot of these might even be in the under 15 category, but I missed it. Instant Pot um, accessories. There's a lot of neat little things that you can use for Instapot. You don't need any of them, but uh, but some of them are really great. Like they sell racks that you can use, the little strainers that you can put in there. You can get like stainless steel metal ones. You can get ones that are that are silicone and they just rest right inside there. You can pull them right out. You could, there's like a, a spring form cake pan. Um, there's all kinds of different little doodads and doodads and get gadgets and stuff like that. So that would be great as well. Uh, 13 by nine casserole dishes. These things are phenomenal. I have a big selection of them. I use them for all different kinds of things, not just baking. Uh, the next one would be a yogurt maker. I love yogurt. I love it. It's fantastic. It can be very difficult to regulate the temperature of yogurt. So there are some really good low cost options that you can get on Amazon. Uh, there are two different types that I'm actually linking. One is it makes it in individual little jars and it's just you put these jars inside of the yogurt maker. You pour like a, um, almost like sous vide style. You just pour the, the water in the bottom and, and that kind of, that steams it. And then another option is where you make it in a container and you can actually just make a batch of it instead of individual jars. So now we're into the under a hundred. So we're getting a little bit up there. So if, you know, this might be like anniversary or, you know, something, if you just have a little bit of extra money to spend on yourself or somebody else, I figured I'd go ahead and throw in some some of the, the higher cost ones. First up, of course, is a water bath canner. A water bath canner, I have a fantastic stainless steel one. I love it, love it, love it. We bought it on Amazon and I use that one almost exclusively whenever I have the option to. Mason Tops Kit. If you, are into, if you like fermenting or if the person you're buying for likes fermenting, Mason Tops Kits are fantastic. I have used them for so many years. I have had almost no failures. I don't think I've had any failures that were not directly my fault, uh, just user error. But I think Mason Tops kits are fantastic. They make the fermentation process go so much smoother and I just love them. And I have a couple of other ones as well that are linked that I have purchased and I like them as well. There's lots of different uh, price points on those sorts of things. Like the Mason Tops kit is, it's actually under 50. It's, I think it's $45 or something like that. And they have a couple of other ones that are a bit simpler, you know, not, not like the name brand ones. So they're gonna be a little bit uh, on the less expensive side. And I'll make sure to put all as many of those as I think is reasonable to see. A Dutch oven. Eight quart is overkill for most things. If you, unless you have a large family, the six quart is where it's at. You can cook almost anything in a six quart. And I learned that the hard way. I bought the eight quart because I was like, oh great, it's bigger. It'll be more practical. No, it's not. You just don't want to use it. It's too heavy. <laughs> I mean, if you have a big family, you might need that. But we don't have a big family, so I almost never use it. I use it if I'm making large canning batches and I just want to use a pretty pan because it's pretty. That's about it. Uh, it's not necessary at all. The six quart is plenty. Yeah, I think I have a four quart and I have two eight quarts. I wish I had the six quart because uh, the four quart is just too small for most things other than sourdough and then um, eight quarts are just big. So I wish I had gotten a six quart. Maybe someday I will, probably not, but maybe someday I will. <laughs> but I have, a, I have an eight quart lodge and I have an eight quart um, Tremontina and a four quart Tremontina. I got it in a kit. It came as a set at Costco. It was actually really inexpensive. So uh, that was a great, if you find that at Costco, it was a great deal. Next up is something that I wish I had. It is a steam canner. I hate water bath canning. Not gonna lie. I hate it. Hate it, hate it, hate it, hate it, hate it. Hate it. I will almost always avoid it. I don't mind it in the pint jars. Because when it comes to the quart jars, I never want to do it in the quart jars. I can't stand it. It's so messy. And I could, I, pots are just never tall enough. So anyways, I really want to get a steam canner someday. So that's definitely on my list of things I won't get. Uh, stock pots are super important, super important when you are learning how to cook. All kinds of soups, stocks, broths, when you're making roasts and veggies and, and sauces, maybe not sauces so much, but you get the point. There are so many different uses and you don't, like one is not enough. Like if you have one stock pot, great. But like you need like at least three and I found that five quart, the eight quart and at least a 15 quart. Um, you need them for various different types of things, especially if you do lots of uh, larger batch things, which is great to do when you're learning how to cook these sorts of things. Because if you make a large batch of something and you can freeze it or can it, 
it's great to do it that way because it's less overwhelming. When you're cooking one large batch, it might take like 10% longer to make, make that large batch, but you don't have to do it every single time you wanna make it. So batch cooking is a great way to do it. And if you have large enough stock pots, you can do that. The last thing I would say is a food processor. And you can get a food processor anywhere from $20 up to $1,000 really, I mean, but really like a hundred bucks, you're looking at, you're gonna get a pretty good uh, Cuisinart brand, you know, something, a, a good brand one, you can get for like a hundred dollars and it brand new. And you can find almost all this stuff also at a thrift store. If you're, if you love to thrift, like you can find all this stuff there. Uh, like I said, I'm not trying to just say, buy my link spend everything at my link, you know, all that kind of stuff. But um, a lot of the things that I've accumulated are things that are, are um, things that I think are good products and things that I think that you guys will as well. But it's also because you can have a visual representation of everything. You can go through and you can click on all the different categories and stuff like that and figure out kind of what you want or what you want to buy for somebody else. And now we're into a little bit higher up. It's under 250 and I only put two things in this category. The first one is a Presto pressure canner. There's two different types of Presto pressure canners. And one is a smaller one where you can just to single stack the jars. And that one's a little bit over, less overwhelming. It's a smaller, it's easier to store. And the other one is a bit larger. I think it's 21 quart or 23 quart. I'm not sure. I have that one actually sitting right over there. And um, I have that one linked for you guys as well. Also an air fryer. Air fryers also, they vary quite widely. I'm linked the one that, that we have. We bought it at Costco and we love it. Um, it is one that's, it's kind of like a toaster oven style that I wish that we had gotten. I, I like this one. It's great. It's fantastic. It works wonders, but I also wish that we could get one that, that was the more of the counter, not the countertop style, but it's kind of like, it has like the pullout kind of drawer and you can just like dump a pile of stuff in and put it back in. Uh, I think that one would be fantastic to have instead or as well, but we ended up going with the toaster oven kind and it works great. We love it. It cooks a, a steak, you know, it cooks like an inch and a half inch steak from raw in, or from, not from raw, obviously it's raw, uh, from frozen in like f 10 minutes. I love it. It is amazing. I miss it. It's in my storage unit right now but I love it, uh, but there's just, it has its own use. And um, I think it would be nice probably to have both, but I would probably go with the less expensive version. Um, I, I will do a little bit of research and try and come up with one that is kind of agreed on is, is a pretty good one because I don't have experience with that sort of one. So the one that I do link, I'm looking into, I think the Instant Pot one looks pretty good. I love the Instant Pot brand. So that one definitely, how on earth did I miss that? on my list. Did I really miss that? <laughs> I missed Instant Pot. <laughs> Instant Pot. Oh my gosh. Game changer for this sort of thing. I can't believe I didn't put an Instant Pot on there. I just got one the other day and I love this thing. I just cooked a chicken in there and it cooked it perfectly nice and juicy and delicious. And it cooked it and gave me some broth in about 40 minutes. And love this thing. It's fantastic. You can also make yogurt in it. You can cook things. It's like a one pot wonder. You can saute everything in it and then just close it up and pressure cook it. I love the Instant Pot. It is great if you, you can also do delay, delay cooking on it. You can do time cooking. You can do, you can adjust all different types of things and options, all different kinds of buttons and get gadgets and gizmos on there to do all different sorts of things. I love the Instant Pot. I had another one, but it's been in storage and I got this one because it's a little bit larger. I would say if you're going with the Instant Pot, the eight quart is definitely something that I think is worth it. I know that with, with the Dutch oven, the smaller one is a little better, but I think with the Instant Pot, the larger one is a little bit better because you're not losing out on any kind of space. It's not really that much larger and it's certainly not much heavier, but you just, that extra two quarts, it makes you be able to cook, you know, roasts from frozen, you can cook uh, chickens from frozen, you can make larger batches of any kind of like yogurt or something like that in there. Uh, you can make large sauces like spaghetti, you know, whatever it may be, Instant Pot is great. And then there's five things over $250 that people who are looking into the more of the nourishing tradition style of cooking, people who are looking more to get you know, to cook things more at home and to do things more from scratch. These, these five things I feel are things that are very beneficial 
not required in any way, shape, or form. But like I said, they do definitely help the process go along smoother. The first one is the Vitamix. I have wanted to have a Vitamix for a very long time. I bought one once and I couldn't justify it in my mind and so I actually ended up returning it. And I, I ever since then, I wish that I had never returned it. I wish that I had kept it. There's so many different uses, so many different things I wanted to do with it. And I just, I never had a high powered blender where I could get a nice smooth sauce or my, 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 um, my you know sauces would be chunky i couldn't grind the you know the nuts properly in it or uh, making a smoothie it was really chunky and grainy kind of so i always wished that i had kept it and so um we actually just decided to invest in one and we actually purchased one from costco they were having a screaming deal it was like a one day sale and we actually got like this i think it was a 7500 i think it was and um so we don't have it yet i we, we had to order it online but i'm I, it's been a long time since I've been as excited to get something because I have to get a Vitamix. I'll show you guys some things that you can do with it, but you can also just get a regular blender. We, I have an Oster glass blender. That is what I've used for a very long time. I had a different Oster black glass blender. My husband accidentally broke it and he went and got replaced that one before I got home from work. <laughs> it's so sweet about it. Um, so I love that one. It's great. I would definitely recommend getting a glass one or a stainless steel one if it's possible. Um, but it's, sometimes it's not always possible, so at the very least, just make sure that you don't put any hot liquids in the plastic and make sure that it is BPA free if possible. Uh, next one is a KitchenAid stand mixer. I actually have two. Um, one I inherited from my mother when she passed away, and I love that one, and that is the one that I use all the time. That one is older than I am. And that is my favorite, that is my preferred blender. I have another blender that I got when I was in, I once upon a time, uh, I used to do pastry. I used to make, I used to be a cake decorator. And um, so I had one back from those days. I bought it probably 10, 15 years ago. And that one, I don't know why. I, just, I, I guess maybe it's just the memories of the, of the one that my mom had. I just always end up using that one. <laughs> so I have two, but I just, I don't often tend to use um, the other one. Um, and then uh, the next one is an all American canner. That one is not my preferred one. I honestly prefer the Presto, and I use the Presto almost exclusively. The only reason that I ever use my All-American is if I need to double stack quart jars. And it's just, it's so big and it's so clunky, but if you cook on an open flame, an All-American would be the, an intelligent decision to make, an intelligent investment to make. Because the Presto, the metal is much thinner and it is much more likely to warp, but so it kind of depends on your cooking surface. If you're cooking on an open flame, you probably want to go look into the All-American. And if you're cooking on a glass top, you probably want to look into a Presto. A Presto is much lighter and is much less, much more likely that it will pass the specifications for your stove's manufacturer's instructions. It kind of just depends. Each, each thing has their own recommendation. Uh, let me see. Another thing is a, um, it, it doesn't have to be the, in the over 250, but uh, just a, a dehydrator, a food dehydrator. Um, you can get one fairly cheap. I believe it's a Nesco brand. I used to have it. It worked great for a very long time um, until it didn't. And then we ended up getting an Excalibur. Food dehydrators are fantastic to have. You can make um, all different, you can dehydrate fruits and make lots of different like fruit leathers or just dehydrated fruits for your kids. You can do the same thing with vegetables. Some, when you dehydrate things, it tends to make them a little bit sweeter. So it's great to have the dehydrator and sometimes you can get kids to eat things they wouldn't eat otherwise. I think they are fantastic to have. You can also dehydrate sauces. You can dehydrate things that you get out of your garden. You can you can make beef jerky if you wanted to. There's all different sorts of things that you can do with a dehydrator. I just think that dehydrator is a fantastic investment. And then the last thing is something, again, that I is on my wish list, thing that I hope I get someday is a Wonder Mill. We have a lot of the grains, um, the grain berries. We have like wheat berries and rye berries and spelt and all different kinds, the whole gamut of different types of these uh, berries, which are basically just the seeds. So if you have somebody who likes to make a lot of sourdough and a lot of grain type of things, uh, that would definitely be something that you might want to think about for them or think about for yourself because they are wonderful. And through all the research that my husband and I have done, uh, the Wonder Mill has definitely come out on top. I cannot say from personal experience, but we do have the Wonder Mill Junior and that's great. Um, but the Wonder Mill itself 
is just the one that has gotten, is the one that we intend to purchase when we do end up purchasing one of these things. So that's again, one of those things like, I can't personally vouch for it, but it has an amazing reputation. I have not really heard anything that poor about it. And I just think it's a wonderful product. So, so um, I think there are definitely gonna be a few other things uh, kind of linked, linked in the shop there. I just wanted to give you guys a good idea and a good variety of different things that you could kind of uh, think about, things that you might want or things that you might want to just entertain the possibility of, hey, do I want this someday? Um, it's not in a way to overwhelm you or be like, hey, you have to have all of these different things, not even close, but they are definitely things that just make life easier. And there are things that um, that definitely can cut down on the frustration if it's something that you do. But like, I, I mean, I would say with things like, say the Exc Excalibur, I wouldn't buy the Excalibur off the bat. We, we bought two um, Nesco dehydrators before we finally invested in the, in the Excalibur. Um, same thing with the Vitamix. I've had several different blenders and I know that I use it enough to justify getting the Vitamix. Um, I had the, um, the Presto pressure canner before we invested in the All-American. And I used that Presto pressure canner. I still have the first one that I ever used and I, I'm glad that we bought it because we do have the versatility. We can use it on an open plane, which I have done. Um, you know, like there's all these different types of things where it's like you might want to, if it's something that you don't know that it's something that you're going to want to do, it's totally fine to get the cheap option. Um, unless you know, if you know, I absolutely know 100% beyond any shadow of a doubt that I am going to use the fancy, um, you know, 19 quart stock pot that I want to make a bunch of sauces and thing, a bunch of um, stocks in or broth. I want to make a bunch of it and I know I'm going to make it. I make it all the time and it's time to finally just upgrade and get it. You know, that's probably the time to do it. Otherwise you might want to get like the two gallon one and see how you do with it. Is it big enough for you? You know, there's lots of different varied options of things that you can do. You definitely don't need to exclusively just get the things that are in the shop. I'm just trying to give you a good idea of some good quality things, the things that you might like and things that I like. So um, I hope that you guys enjoyed this video and it's definitely not anything that's exclusive for Mother's Day. I am definitely, this, this is great for Mother's Day. It's great for anniversaries, birthdays, Christmas, um, you know, Valentine's Day. It's just great for, I mean, it is probably more of a female oriented list and, but it's for anybody who enjoys uh, cooking in the kitchen and anybody who would enjoy getting a more of a practical gift versus um, jewelry. But in my opinion, anything on this list, I would be happy to get. So, but that is also me because I came up with the list. So it kind of just depends on the person you're purchasing for. So anyways, I'm going to quit yammering. Um, I hope that you guys um, enjoy, I hope that you guys enjoyed this list and I hope that it is helpful and beneficial to you. And I hope that you guys get some ideas and some inspiration of some things that you can purchase for your significant other, your loved one, or yourself at some point in the future. And if you do, I hope you give this video a thumbs up. Helps with all googly algorithmic things. And if you guys are new around here, I like to do all kinds of videos on food preservation, canning, freezing, dehydrating, fermenting, and using all of these equipments that I have shown you already here before. So if that is interesting to you, make sure you click this button here. That is the subscribe button. That's gonna take you to all the fun that we have around here. Up here is a video that Mr. Google Pants thinks that you're gonna enjoy. Over here is a video where I'm using one of these awesome things. And then up here is probably gonna be my canning playlist because I have lots of canning, canning videos and they're cool and they're fun and I love them. So anyways, we'll talk to you later. Thanks for watching, bye.